Good morning, GBMC. We're so excited that you're here to join us for worship. Uh, will, will you please uh, look to your screen, and we are going to pray together the invitation to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come to us again and guide and make holy the church. Give to us the gifts to transform our congregation, patience and understanding, counsel and guidance, and knowledge and piety, that we may always be about the work of thy greater good. Open the horizons of our minds by the flame of your wisdom. Loosen our tongues to show your praise. Speak your words of true peace and proclaim the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we will begin our worship this morning singing hymn number 57. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Let's all stand and sing together. this day, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I invite you again, yeah, to uh, poke your head outside. It is an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful day. Perhaps a perfect day uh, maybe to uh, go out get in your car and perhaps uh, visit somebody and, and drive by and wave hi to them, honk your horn and let them know how much that you love them. Indeed, this is a great day. Also want to thank you for the many blessings that you uh, have been giving and blessing uh, Great Bridge United Methodist Church. This past week we had a very generous offering of $9,185 that came in. In addition, we had 562 persons that visited with us uh, online. And how that stacks up with last year at the same time with in-person worship, we had 560. So. We had two more folks uh, visit with us uh, this week through our online worship than we actually had in person last year. So praise God, praise God. This morning I invite you, if you will, let's, let's bow our heads together and let's give unto God first and foremost the gifts of our hearts and our lives. 
but then also our tithes, our offerings, and our gifts. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this glorious, beautiful day that you have created, a day in which we worship you, when we glorify your name with beautiful hymns and just hearing the word, Lord, we're just so anticipating um, a wonderful message from Pastor Daniel. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for his ministry uh, with us and just ask your continued blessings upon him and open our hearts as we receive the word that he is bringing to us today. Lord, we ask you uh, to bless the gifts and the offerings and the tithes that we make and that you might use the, these gifts for the building of your kingdom. And Lord, as we offer our hearts to you, as we offer our lives to you, we pray that as part of that offering, we might remember that we are connected to the, the true vine, the vine of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who calls upon us to bear good fruit. And may the fruit that we bring, may the fruit that we bear, may it be indeed be good for the building of your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. This we ask in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. How do I follow that up, huh? Great Bridge, our scripture reading this morning comes from the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to John, and we will be reading from verses 1 through 8. So listen now for the word of God. I am the real vine, and my father is the farmer. He cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes, and every branch that is grape-bearing he prunes back so that it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine, you are the branches, and while you're joined with, when you're joined with me and I am with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you cannot produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my Father shows who he is, when you produce grapes, when you mature as disciples. 
Friends, this is the word of God for all of us, the people of God. About 17 years ago, I experienced my first hurricane. And I remember feeling a little bit surprised by that hurricane. I was living in Arlington, Virginia, not a place known for a lot of big storms passing through. And fittingly, we didn't get hit, we didn't get hit very hard. I do remember this, though. I do remember distinctly walking around my neighborhood and seeing a tree limb detached from its tree. This was a, a pretty big tree, and the, the fallen limb was, was lying underneath it, had been moved out of the road and was resting underneath it. And I remember going up to look at it and noticing that it was a pretty thick branch. It was, it was several inches thick. It was long enough, it looked like, to actually span the width of our neighborhood streets. And yet still, this big, strong, sturdy branch was resting on the ground in front of me. Now, it made an impression on me. I say this, of course, to an audience of Tidewater veterans who have, I'm sure, had quite a few harrowing storm stories that they could share with me. Stories about gale force winds and rain so thick you couldn't see. I bet you all have seen many a season like that. Many a storm like that. But I wonder, maybe you've... Well, maybe you've been in a stormy season of life as well at one point. Does that, does that seem accurate? Have you ever experienced a, a season in life when you feel like the winds of the world around you are blowing so fiercely that they're just about to knock you over and you don't know if you'll be able to get back up when they do? I don't know about you. I have been feeling that way a lot over the last few weeks. The deaths, the protests, the anger, the rage, the pain. Each of these things has pushed, pushed me to ask really hard questions about myself. And if I'm being honest, to, to do a little bit of soul searching as well. And of course, that doesn't even take into account the reality of COVID-19. The winds of which have uprooted so many pieces of our lives and continue to lash out at our hearts in this fragile and dangerous time. There's no other way to say it, Great Bridge. We have been tested. You have been tested. I have been tested. All of us have been tested as of late. And so I think it goes without saying that in this metaphorical stormy season, it is really tough to be a branch these days. And yet, that's what Jesus is calling us to do, isn't he? In our passage for today, he says, I am the vine and you, you are the branches. And for me, that's a metaphor as simple to understand as it is difficult to put in practice. It's a metaphor that tells us that in the Holy Spirit, we are bound and connected to him, our Savior, and through the Holy Spirit, we can actually enter into intimate and organic relations with our Savior. And just as we are connected to Jesus through the Holy Spirit, so through the Holy Spirit do we hear Jesus' cry to us to be like branches, to reach out into a broken world and serve fruit to those whom Jesus loves. We are called to remind the world and its people that they matter to the God who creates and redeems and sustains them. Through the Holy Spirit, we are brought into relationship with God, and we are also called to form new relationships with other people. We are part of a vine. We are bearers of fruit. That's what it means to be a Christian. Simple as that. Something that I hadn't really thought about until this week when I started reading this, um, this text and trying to get ready for this sermon. Have you ever thought about why Jesus called himself a vine? Specifically? 
I hadn't. I know I hadn't. But the more I thought about it, the more I wondered, why didn't he pick, for instance, a a strong and tall cedar tree or an oak tree, something that could reach up into the sky and touch the clouds, something that could extend its branches far and wide and cover and create shade, something tall and proud and strong and sturdy, something that could have supplied the wood for great halls and castles or majestic temples or strong ships that cut through the waters of the ancient world. Or why not something that could have been hewn into a shield or a spear or an axe handle or a bow or a quiver of arrows? Or why not a thorn bush, something sturdy and prickly and abrasive and hard to get close to, something naturally protected and resistant to this dangerous world that we live in. Why not one of those things? Why, of all things, a grapevine? Well, Thinking about it now, I would say that Jesus calling himself the true vine is actually a very appropriate choice given the way that he lived his life. Because when it comes to showing love, Jesus was and is still fearlessly and relentlessly committed to being present with us and to showing us love in the way that we need in that moment. We've all experienced, I hope, this kind of love before. I know I have. I've been blessed in that way. And just to give you one such moment when I experienced it, I remember one night when, as a senior in high school, I was playing what turned out to be my last organized football game ever. I got a concussion, and I was held out of the game. And you all know me pretty well by now. You know I'm a pretty emotional person. That was true back then. It's still true today. And I remember coming out of our locker room and seeing our team up ahead of me and realizing that I wasn't a part of that anymore. Realizing that I wasn't going back into the game. Realizing that my time playing football was over. And... So while my teammates got to keep playing, at least for a few more minutes, I sat on the sideline and I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. And then I looked up. And I realized that, (laughs) I realized that my mom had come down out of the bleachers past the fence, and was standing next to me. In the midst of all the chaos that was happening around me, all the chaos of a football game unfolding in real time, she was standing right there with me. She didn't say anything. She didn't do anything. She didn't tell me to buck up or give me some false sense of encouragement. She was just there. She was with me. She was with me when I needed someone to be with me. She was a gentle presence in a wounded moment. That, to me, is the embodiment of the kind of love that Jesus showed throughout his life and continues to show to us today. Because, let's be honest, Jesus is not like a tall oak tree. Jesus is not like a prickly thorn bush. He's not proud and aloof. He's not confrontational and defensive. He stands up for what's right, yes. But he also meets us where we are, and like a branch, he reaches out to us. He is God-made human, so radically committed to being present with us that he actually took on flesh 
and walked among us. And like a vine, he encourages us to reach out to him, to eat his fruit, to taste and see his goodness, to experience firsthand the fruits of his love, and to experience that love in intimate and organic ways that change our lives. And through the Holy Spirit, he continues to extend that offering to us today, no matter the cost to him, no matter how broken, misguided, or proud we might be. Our passage today comes just before Jesus goes to the cross. Just before Jesus, God incarnate, experiences the frailty that comes with being a grapevine in the eye of a hurricane. Just before he is abandoned by his friends and condemned by those who once cheered for him and left to die and murdered by those he came to save. And yet it is even to those very people, even to the people who crucified him, that Jesus' love is on offer and has always been on offer. I seem to recall a bit of scripture, and I think you've probably heard it too, that tells us that God gave his only begotten son not just for the Jews, not just for the righteousness, not just for the wise, not just or even for the people who have the right opinions on current events or the snide Facebook comment that can end the conversation. No, I seem to recall that that bit of scripture reminds us that God gave his only begotten son for us all, for the world, and for you, and for me, and for each and every member member of our species so that we might believe and so that we might rise to eternal life. So Great Bridge, I have a question to ask you. Will you be a branch off that vine Will you be united to Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit? Will you allow yourself to be frail enough to be gentle? Will you choose not to prick and stab at other people, not to stand tall and proud and above them, but to reach out and nourish them? Because from the bottom of my heart, I am convinced that this is the way of Jesus Christ. In Jesus, we see a God who finds strength in weakness, who defeats evil through mercy, who understands that love and justice cannot be separated, but loves the unjust anyway. Will you join him in that? Will you bear the fruit that feeds our starving society? Will you be the calming presence in this stormy world? Will you be the faithful branch of the vine whose love feeds us all? You're needed, friends. Please say yes. And as you do so, as you go out into the world to love and to serve, may the joy of Jesus be with you. Amen.
us unite our hearts and become one before the Lord as we pray together. Let us pray. Indeed, Almighty God, here we are this morning. We come before you during this time of prayer. We offer to you once again our hearts and our lives, our whole being, as we seek to become a whole new me because of the, the giftings of the Holy Spirit. As we remember and reflect on the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we connect to the true vine, as we grow forth as branches, and as we embrace our calling to bear good fruit, fruit that can be used in the world to meet the needs, the hunger and the thirst, the pains and the sufferings, the joys and the celebrations, knowing that all the while that this fruit that we've been called to bear comes through our connection. connected to that true vine. The life and the ministry, the passion and the death, and the resurrection and the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive us for 
our shortcomings, our faults, and our failures, the times in which we have disassociated with the vine, have separated ourselves, have cut ourselves off by our own means. And help us this morning to reconnect. To reconnect in a powerful, a new way. For indeed, Lord, here we are. Here we are, and we are yours. May we hear the call. May we feel the call. May we embrace the call. For we are needed. And the Holy Spirit is there to guide us and to help us to go forward. I meet the challenges of this day. I meet the challenges of the days that are yet to come. Because we have a, a great Lord and Savior, a true vine, Jesus Christ. Jesus invited us and showed us that the power of prayer is mighty. And indeed, Lord, in his spirit, we pray that you would hear our prayers this morning for our family and our friends, that you would hear our prayers this morning for situations, that you would hear what comes from our hearts as we lift up to you Calvin Jones and family, as we pray for Dan and for Larry, as we pray for pastors and congregations who are going through transitions, especially, Lord, we lift up to you Pastor Daniel. We thank you for his ministry with us. It has made us stronger, made us to feel more vital within the connection we will miss him greatly. But we know that your gifts are upon him. And we know that as he brings those gifts to his next congregation, that they too will be inspired and that they will feel the love. And they will be challenged, challenged by the word he often brings to be a good witness in the community. Bless them as well. Lord, we pray for Jean and for Morris and for Jessica. We lift up to you a cliff and we pray for our country. We pray for peace. We lift up to you our family members and we pray for Janet. We pray for protesters and non-protesters. We pray for Jessica and for Kim and for Adam and Matt and Karen. Hear our prayers for Richard and Donna. And Lord, we pray for those who have COVID-19. Lord, we also lift up to you our unspoken prayers. And the prayers that have come to us this morning by means of the internet, we pray for Andrea and for her continued healing. We lift up to you, Lord Jean, and ask you to be with her in her upcoming procedure. Lord, we pray for, for Luther as he prepares to go from this life to the life that is to come. We pray for his wife, Toby. And now, dear Lord, we, we took a few moments to lift before you those prayers that are on our hearts. So hear these, our prayers, as we lift them up to you now. We ask all these things in the blessed and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us that when we are together, we are to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We are going to close our worship service this morning with hymn 569. We've a story to tell to the nations. Let's stand and sing it together. Amen. It has truly been wonderful to worship with you today online. And I just want to say, may the Lord bless you and keep you this week. Sow peace in your communities all through, all through the people in your circles and those outside your circles. And I just want to say thank you to Pastor Daniel for all he's done for our church in the last year. It's been an honor to worship and serve next to him. And I just want to invite you to sing with a jo and join with the heavenly choir as we let heavenly music fill this place.
going to be full. It's always full. And it'll be the same in your church, I promise. It'll be full. It'll be full of people like me, full of people who haven't been at church in a while, full of people who think they might be critiqued or analyzed or judged unfairly, full of people who don't have God in their lives and aren't exactly sure how to get him back. But you know what? Before I step in, I need you. I need you to do something that's probably a big deal for you. You're going to see me this week, and I need you not to walk past me, and I need you to work through your fear because I'm working through mine, and I just just need you to invite me in. And if I act like I'm not interested in going to church with you, still, I need you to ask me to come. I need you to help me see God. (laughs) I don't even know what that means. I need you more than you know. Because look, at the end of the day, God said he loved me enough to die for me. I mean, that is the claim, right? And if he died and he didn't stay dead, your church will be full this weekend. Your church could be full this weekend with people just like me. Different face, different skin color, different age, sex, or social status. But make no mistake, I could be sitting right next to you. I just need you to invite me in, that's all. Nothing more, nothing less. And nothing complicated. And nothing driven by guilt. Just invite me in.